It's six in the morning, and across India's major cities, a military-style operation is in full swing. In this industrial kitchen in the far-flung northeastern city of Patna, lunch is being prepared for 25,000 primary school children. In the kitchen at present here, it serves around 290 schools. In cities like Patna, they're pre-cooked, packed, loaded into vans and shuttled off to schools. The school midday meal program started in Bihar in the year 2005. As of now, we are covering uh, approximately 70,000 schools. Ten years ago, India's Supreme Court decreed in a landmark ruling that every child in every government primary school should receive a prepared midday meal. So each and every school day, 120 million Indian children are served a school lunch. And for children in Bihar, one of the most underprivileged corners of this hugely populated country, it could very well be their only meal of the day. This scheme, to a certain extent, addresses the problem of malnutrition. And this scheme has contributed towards uh, improvement in the attendance of kids in the schools and in terms of retention of kids in the schools. It's a smooth routine at this central Patna school. The teachers conduct a required taste test, then lunch is served and the children tuck in. In a society plagued by caste discrimination, the lunch is a great leveller. Children from all castes eat together. <laughs> It's the world's largest public food program that aims to fight hunger and malnutrition. It should be the pride of the nation, but instead many Indians have had their faith in the program shattered. They're asking why a program set up to save children's lives inexplicably and in one sitting killed 23. It's a few minutes after midnight on Wednesday, July 17th this year. Ambulances race through the city streets, making their way to the Patna Medical Centre Hospital. And soon these heartbreaking images of desperately ill children would race around the world. By the time they'd arrived here from their remote village for diagnosis and treatment, it would be 12 hours since they ate their school lunch and became dangerously ill. In the history of my medical service, I think this was one of the most hair-raising experience for me. In fact, uh, never ever I remember that I would, uh, could have met uh, so many children and in such a situation that uh, uh, they were going to die immediately, that kind of situation. So it was pathetic for me and uh, in fact, uh, Four of them I received dead, then and there. This critically ill boy, Mantu, whose father is carrying him into the hospital, has no idea his little brother, Ashu, died on the way. Amid these chaotic scenes, questions were being asked and answers demanded. Why was this school lunch fatal? How did it happen? and who was responsible. So we were sure that something wrong has uh, happened in the food, the cooking part of it. And uh, at that stage, it was not possible for us to make sure what has happened. Is it a conspiracy? Is it an accident? We were making sure that, first of all, proper treatment is given to these kids. Mystery surrounds the incident. Rumour and conspiracy theories abound.
to discover what we can about the incident that played out so swiftly and tragically, we head off to the remote village of Gandaman, a three-hour drive from Patna. It's only 100 kilometres away, but this is Bihar, and the roads are seriously neglected and in parts just a pothole track. In Gandaman, we meet Chanda Devi, older than her years and devastated by her loss. At 35, Chanda Devi has given birth to 12 children. Her family knows what it's like to go hungry, but that's nothing compared to the heartbreak they're now enduring. She's mourning not just the death of one child, but two. Seven-year-old Pralad was the baby of the family, and his 10-year-old brother, Rahul, was a twin to Sister Roshni. Neither of the boys wanted to go to school that day. Today, the primary school is a ghostly shell. Goats and cows graze where 55 children sat and ate their lunch. Pralad and Rahul joined the other children, some as young as five, none older than 10. The school principal, Mina Davy, was handing out new textbooks as the two cooks prepared the midday meal. It was here in what was a makeshift kitchen on the veranda of the school building that the midday meal was prepared. It was a soya bean curry. The cook noticed the foul smelling oil and that the food was turning black and went off to the principal to complain. According to Chanda Devi's husband, Harandra, the cook's complaint fell on deaf ears. Fourteen-year-old Ranjit's two younger brothers, Ashu and Mantu, were among the 55 served the lunch. When he heard children were collapsing, he jumped on his motorbike and rushed to the school. His father held his two brothers on the back of the motorbike as he rode all four of them to the local hospital. Despite their condition, Ranjit says his brothers managed to tell him the school principal insisted they eat the foul-smelling food. Ranjit 
सबको डंडे से मार मार कर खिलाई थी भाई खाओ नहीं तो डंडा मारूंगा Only one small image of the school principal Mina Davy is in public circulation. It's claimed she failed to carry out the obligatory taste test on the food, but other evidence is emerging that at the very least suggests serious negligence and at worst according to some a premeditated plan to cause harm. Mina Davy kahi hai kya hai? Bino Matu and his wife Bookie Davy lost three of their four children that day. Two daughters, nine and seven, and a five-year-old son. Now my heart is telling me that now the Lord is giving me a little bit of love. How much love is in my heart. We want him to get hurt. He has to get hurt. He has to get hurt. Because my child is dead. He has to get hurt. He has to get hurt. He has to get hurt. मीना कुमारी के जाए मीना कुमारी के सजाए जब मीना कुमारी के सामने ऐसा ही बच्चा को मुआने के जी बच्चा उनको मारो ये मीना देवी तड़पस में जैसे हम तड़पते हैं। Chanda Davy and her family also hold the school principal responsible. तो ये ऐसा ही मीना देवी ये ही दर्द के सबको बचा है हम तो गरीब हैं हमारे तो पास कुछ है नहीं बच्चा के लिए कौनो मने ममता के लिए आलामे दूसर कुछ नहीं है कतना कोष्ट से बच्चा जो पोसा गया पला गया तो तू जोहर दे के मुआ दे लूँ small kids dying of eating government meal so there was lot of anger it was very concentrated in the food the chemical it's up to this man to get to the bottom of it all superintendent Kumar heads the Ganderman investigation. Among his first tasks, an authoritative analysis of the food that killed the children. Samples taken from the school lunch were sent to Patna's government laboratory. A lethal ingredient was identified. A poison, monocrotophos. In 48 hours, we were told that uh, monocrotophos, which is an organophosphorus pesticide that is being used in uh, India uh, to kill pests, especially on sugarcane, was found in the food sample. Monocrotophos is widely used by farmers in India. It's a cheap and effective pesticide, and in this part of Bihar, where sugarcane grows well, it's in demand. Investigators descended on this small sugarcane farm owned by Meena Davy's family. During our investigation, we have come to know that her husband, Arjun Rai, who is a farmer, he has collected around 500 ml of monocrotophos from a sugar mill that is not very far from the village. So monocrotophos was present in her house, that part we have established in our investigation. Now, was that deliberately taken to the school or was it accidentally taken into the school? We recovered a bottle from the school. That was empty. Traces of a chemical were found on that uh, bottle. Investigators have learned that a schoolgirl was sent to the principal's home to collect cooking oil for the lunch. They're examining whether or not she mistook the farming family's monocrotophos for the cooking oil. In this part of the world, you get the food cooked in mustard oil. And this, I believe, uh, this has a strong resemblance to monocrotophos. Maybe that uh, this was used as a medium to cook the entire food. What was the concentration of the pesticide in the food? It was very high. It was around 52 times higher than the uh, permissible limit. And that's why the results were so fatal. As local police try to establish precisely how monocrotophos got into the lunches and who was responsible, international authorities wonder why the pesticide continues to be used in India, let alone on such a widespread scale. We feel monocrotophos is farmer friendly, very economical, very effective, 
and the story about harmful effects are all highly exaggerated because it is, though it is toxic, according to us, it's very safe. Pesticides are big business, a business that's made Raju Shroff a very wealthy man. He doesn't have to worry about the Mumbai traffic on his morning commute to the United Phosphorus Plant, India's biggest producer of monocrotophos. When farmers use it, they dilute it. But if you want to commit suicide, yes, you open the bottle and drink, then you need only three, four spoons. How is the production? What Raju Shroff claims is safe, the World Health Organization labels highly hazardous. It says that less than a teaspoon of the pesticide can kill and it's easily absorbed through the skin. Okay. It's environmentally damaging and is a long lingering hazard to wildlife. Okay. Yeah. A few years ago, the WHO urged India to follow the lead of many other countries, including the United States, various European nations, China and Australia, and ban monocrotophos. Raju Shroff played a key role in making sure the Indian government imposed no such ban. He's now taking a keen interest in the Ganderman case. I can repeat firmly and clearly that if you prove the monocrotophos is there in this food, I'll close down my factory. He claims the lab analysis of the food and the police investigation into the incident are deeply flawed. It's totally bogus. Where is the report? They're hiding it, no report. We send our own scientist to forensic laboratory. They say, run away, get out. Indian forensic laboratories, particularly police department, are famous for manipulating and collecting money and bribe. This is the house of the school principal, Mina Davy, who abandoned the sick children and went into hiding. Here on her front door, a district magistrate has posted a summons for her to appear in court. It was a week before she was arrested. Mina Davy remains in custody and is now facing a criminal charge of negligence and civil charges of murder and conspiracy to murder that have been brought by the father of a dead child. तो कोई भी जब उसको खिला तो बोलता है कि एक दो निवाला वो ज़्यादा ही खा ले कोई भी बोल सकता है आपका भी बच्चा चाहे मेरा भी बच्चा खा रहा है थोड़ा सा अगर बच जाता है बोलता है लोगी उसको खा जाओ साफ कर दो बोलता है ना वैसे ही मीना देवी ने भी बोला होगा ये कोई जरूरी है कि जहर डाल के बोला मीना मीना देवी ने बोला कि नहीं तुम जहर ही खा लो मीना देवी एक बहुत अच्छी और सुशील लड़की औरत थी और यहाँ सब किसी से उसको इसके मिलजुल के रहना Manoj Kumar, Meena Devi's nephew and next door neighbour, doesn't believe for a moment that his aunt could or would harm the children. उसके भी दो बच्चे हैं कौन सी माँ चाहेगी कि जहर देके अपने बच्चे को जिसको लार प्यार करके वहाँ पढ़ा रही है उसको मतलब मौत के घाट उतार दे कोई नहीं चाहेगा सरकार की भी तो लापरवाही है अगर मीना देवी की लापरवाही है तो उसके साथ साथ सरकार की गवर्नमेंट की भी तो लापरवाही है जब विद्यालय जब विद्यालय का अपना भवन नहीं है तो कहाँ के लिए दे दिए खाना बनाने के लिए यहाँ किचन नहीं है ना सामान रखने की व्यवस्था है सरकार ना ये अगर ऐसा नहीं की होती तो ये घटना नहीं होता The government-run school lunch program is vast, complex and uneven. Inspectors like Rapesh try to ensure the operation in his state runs as best it can. Don't tell me, you tell me. Everyone is scared, what are you going to tell me? I've understood it. He's an advisor to the commissioners of the Supreme Court and audits Bihar's midday meal scheme. You will eat it. You will not eat it. Today, he's visiting a school on the outskirts of the capital, Patna. 
Rapesh has been sounding the alarm for some time. Supreme Court ke order ke mutabik lagatar infrastructure monitoring ke sandar me jo adesh hai uspar ham logone lagatar sarkar ko likar dia. Lekin itne var dene ke babajud raja sarkar uspar koi karwai nahi. Ye is titiya to hai. To sarkar ko chahiye ki infrastructure barhae or isko system ko tik kare. Rapesh has investigated the Ganderman tragedy, and while he's concluded the school principal was negligent, he's also highly critical of the Bihar government. Because this is not only one school, but where the whole schools are, which is this kind of school, there can be such a thing. Rapesh has been Instead of reviewing its processes, the state government went on an astonishing attack. Bihar's Chief Minister, Natish Kumar, seen here at his weekly public forum, declared the tragedy a political conspiracy aimed at discrediting the school lunch program. He claims the poisoning was deliberate, organised by enemies of his government and carried out by Meena Devi. State criminal act. और इसलिए स्टेट पे सिर्फ एक व्यक्ति पर फोकस करके इसको इस घटने को हटा देना चाहती है अभी हमारे पास कोई ऐसा एविडेंस नहीं है जिसे हम यह कह सके कि यह कोई राजनीति का खेल था परंतु घटना के बाद जिस तरीके से सभी पार्टियों ने जिस तरीके से पहल कदमियां दिखाई है यह बहुत ही शर्म का विषय है Three weeks on from the poisoning, the Bihar government has turned discharge day for the surviving children into a party. There's balloons, speeches and well-wishing. It's a calculated PR attempt to win back public support. Man too, the boy seen here being carried into the hospital by his father is finally going home. He still doesn't know his younger brother, Ashu, died on the night. His mother and father won't break the news until he gets home. Back home, waiting for his family to return, eldest son, Ranjit, has had the responsibility of running the family farm. कोई भी काम अच्छा से कर नहीं सकता हूँ जहाँ भी काम करने के लिए जाता हूँ वहाँ मेरे भाई जा जाते थे पहले अब कौन जाते He also had a responsibility no 14-year-old should have to undertake burying his youngest brother Mounds of earth surround the school Beneath them, the bodies of many of the victims of the poisoning. Ashu is among them. It's been a long wait for Ranjit, but finally the ambulance that's carried his brother and parents back from Patna is in his sights. <laughs> it's a homecoming of emotional extremes as Mantu is told for the first time that Ashu is dead. <laughs> For the poor, desperately deprived people of Ganderman Bihar, with so little to sustain them, family is everything. And for so many families who lost children in this extraordinary tragedy, the pain is unimaginable.
They crave answers and hope for justice, but there's no guarantee they'll get either. तेज छोटा छोटा जात है ये गांव में छतरी नहीं है भुंझार नहीं है बड़ा बड़ा आदमी नहीं, नहीं है कोई छोटा बच्चा के बच्चा मरेगा तो कोई क्या करेगा मर रोह चिल्ला के रह जाएगा Thank you.